Good afternoon, amazing people. Wow. Good morning to those who are waking up. Good afternoon to those who are like us. And good evening to the rest of you, wherever you're watching us. Today, I have an amazing topic, guys, and I feel that I need to share it with you. This is a thing that so many desperate people go through and us back in Africa or back in Kenya or back in our homes that we don't truly know about. So, guys, as usual, your loving girl here, Pauline, taking you facts that way back at home we don't know and people in diaspora truly go through. So, guys, without wasting much of your time, let's jump to this topic. So, today we are going to see of the things that the diasporans go through, but us back at home, we don't go through. And for me, I can say, I think diaspora life is hard and back at home life is simple because of the so many things that i've seen or so many stories that i've heard from people who stay in diaspora i personally have never been to diaspora but i know what my friends go through each and every time so i thought it's good of me sharing with you so that at least when you ask for money or you ask for favor from the people in diaspora you know what you're asking for and you know or you truly understand what they're going through so guys our point number one today is People in diaspora hold so many jobs. What do I mean by so many jobs? It's like when you wake up in the morning, you've already started your day. You've kicked up your day to start with the first job. Maybe you work for like three or four hours for one person. After the hours are over, you just get another job. Not that you go and just get another job. No, you have enrolled in these jobs. You know what time you're supposed to report to the next job. You truly know what time you should finish the other job and get to the other job. People in diaspora have like more than three to four jobs for them to sustain their life well in diaspora. What about Kenyan? What about us back at home? We just have that one job that we are depending on. A job that you're relying on from 6 a.m. in the morning back to 5 p.m. in the afternoon or maybe 6 p.m. So you wake up in the morning and you feel you're so tired going to this job that you're going to sit the whole day in the office until 5 p.m. for you to go home and you're very comfortable at the end of the month with the money you're paid. But people in diaspora, they need to work like four to five jobs. Every day they are seeing different bosses for them to sustain their life in diaspora. So I hope that is clear when you're sending someone in diaspora to send your money. Our second point is people in diaspora, they are so sleepless and they don't have a social life. What do I mean by sleepless? These people sleep late. There's so many jobs they are doing. Okay, this point also is the same as point number one because these people, they have so many jobs, as we have, as we have said, and they sleep late. Maybe their last job is a sh it's scheduled at 9 to 10 or to 11 p.m. So this person, by the time he or she is home, they are already tired. They feel fatigued, but they don't have anything else to do because they're still struggling to make their life up there. So this person has no social life. This person has no time to go for dunda. This person has no time to go and have fun with friends or catch up unless they're losing one of their jobs for them to have that switch time. What about us here back in Kenya? We have a life that we feel that every Friday, once it's Friday, it's weekend. We have to party. We get time for sweet time. We get time for family. We get time for having fun, for partying, for doing all sorts of party and celebrations here. So guys, if you truly understand what these diasporans feel mercy for them, you know, they also miss to be like you, but they have to struggle and work hard. I wish we could also do the same, have so many jobs at least to settle our bills. But now we are already in the comfort zone where one job is enough for us and every weekend is a party weekend. So guys, I hope this is, it's an eye opener for you all. Even for me, it's an eye opener that I need to not get comfortable with one job, but seek and look for other jobs to do in between my day to make it a fulfillment or to achieve my, my goals. So another point is, the color that we share okay guys we have so many people who seek jobs in different countries and you know we got vanillas and chocolates what do i mean by vanillas and chocolate take for instance you've gone to work 
And now I'm taking this to the diaspora and said, you've gone to work, you're a chocolate, you go do some messy things or you don't give your reports on time or you don't give the feedback on time, you don't get to work on time, you know, or you don't, you don't do your job perfectly. Instead of the vanilla trying to show you or explain to you, they tend to feel that you're doing useless. They tend to feel that you're not doing anything for them, you know. But if a vanilla does that, they try and understand that we are the best, you know. We have the knowledge that you the chocolates that you don't have. They tend to feel that even if they have done a mistake, it can be corrected. But for you, a chocolate who has done a mistake, they can't be corrected. What about back here in our country? What about us back at home? We are all equal in the eyes of a boss. We all feel equal. We all feel that no one has power over the other one there is no discrimination there is no uh mocking or anything we are all comfortable yeah and so the diasporans again they undergo a lot of pressure i hope that point is so clear for you so our next point is appearance yo as i said people in diaspora face so many challenges when it comes to the appearance what do i mean by appearance you go you work for your boss you report there but the way they look at you it's as if you're a criminal by itself you know they don't they don't believe in you they don't put all that trust that you might be having but they don't have that trust in you they'll feel that they're you're not entitled to be with them and if it's a vanilla again as you're saying they will feel that they are comfortable and even free with them you might be a target at the end of the day they feel that this person is here at the wrong time and at the wrong place at the same time but back at home you're very comfortable whatever or wherever you look like you may be so like chocolate may be you're a vanilla may be any sort of appearance you know we are all created by the image of god and so your appearance back at home is nothing to anyone as long as you're productive as long as you're giving your all you're all sorted up that's another point so let's jump to the other point security there's so much insecurity for example in the diaspora you have gone there with dreadlocks you have gone dressed like uh, a church person or maybe not even a church person you've gone there dressed in a manner of let's say here it's a casual dress but forever you've gone there you're not in any official kind of dressing and these people might tend to feel this person is coming to sell up their body or this person they're coming to cause destruction or this person is coming to do their own things but not the work that they are they're supposed to do so they will be distracted and they will feel I'm not secured under this person. Maybe you go there dressed in a funny way or having funny hairstyles and they'll think that you're not here to work but you have a mission that is bringing you here. Back in our country, there is no insecurity, sweetheart. Wherever you dress, whatever you wear, whatever, everything, the way you appear, your looks and everything, as long as you're comfortable with all that you need, all that you're giving out to your boss as long as you're performing at the end of the month they are very much comfortable with you so i think guys it's the high time we learn to appreciate each and every person for us in diaspora we need to work hard and have a good life at the end of it so our next point is cost of living yo guys i know i know and understand life in diaspora is so expensive what do i mean if you need to eat fresh food, fresh vegetable, unless you have enough money for you to sustain that life of having fresh meal, then you're good to go. Unless you have a good and well-paying job for you to be able to live in a good house, to pay your electricity, to pay your sewer, to pay your meals, to pay your gas, you should have at least some money or some job that will make you have all that. You know, if you're earning penny sweetheart you won't be able to pay for yourself a good house a good bed good clothing even to look decent you won't manage that because you don't have anything so the cost of living in diaspora is high because each and every day you're paying you're paying taxes you're paying federal you're paying everything all the bills are on your neck your money gets to the account within no time 
you just get negative 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 what about here in kenya you just start working at the end of the month you have your money still intact one week your cash is still intact two weeks your cash is still intact and you feel so much proud of yourself because you don't have much to pay the only bills that you have is only food rent and transport that's all you need and the month still goes on and on so i hope once again when you start depending on the people on diaspora for your finances get at least have that on your mind have that idea and remember how they're struggling to achieve another point is how many bills do they have to pay how many bills do you pay at the end of the month diaspora you have more than 20 bills to pay that's one person that's the reason they have more than four to five jobs for them to be able to sustain their life back in kenya back in africa back at home you have only one job as long as you know you're fed your children they are dressed they can go to school and you have electricity and um, a roof on top of your head you're already sorted you don't feel that you need another job you don't need to struggle you know you don't need to wake up early and not start jumping from one boss to the other to the other to the other because you're not struggling much so that's what people in diaspora truly face and i hope you understand it another point is homesick do you have a relative in diaspora do they call you do they tell you they miss you so many diasporans if they're your friends or your family you give them a video call the minute they see you they start shedding tears the reason is not because they are bored wherever they are but they have homesick they are missing their home they are missing the freedom that they could have to just be with their family but no circumstances and situations has forced them to stay wherever they are to work and able to sustain their life or their family's life you know there are people who went to diaspora not because of their own need but because they saw the struggles they are facing back home or the challenges they are facing made them or pushed them to go all that way for them to be able to make a living for their family you see so that their family can be comfortable back at home there's no one who has homesick you every day you meet you wake up you see your family every day is a family time for you but people in diaspora they have no time every time for them is working time but the minute they get that chance to have a video call or a conversation a call with their family means a lot to them so i hope that is clear another point is do you know once you go to diaspora you're forced to go back to school yes you might be a doctor you might be a banker but the minute you land in diaspora may it be in canada may it be in america may it be in uk london mauritius australia germany belgium name it all you have to go back to school yes you have your papers but they don't consider your papers all you need is get to their country one first you have to learn the languages that they speak that's a mandatory thing you have to know their language number two you have to go through papers school for you to show or to prove to them that you're learning done accounts you've done hospitality you've done nursing you've done medicine and you can prove it so you need to prove to them by going back to school do that academic year maybe one or two for them to to approve you as a doctor to approve you as a banker to approve you as a nurse but back at home once you've gone to that school high school that's number one you've gone to high school people know you're learned you have gone to college people know you're learned you have gone to university my friend they say you're a doctor even if you have not achieved your doctorates you just have one degree or you've done to your master's level they see you as a doctorate because they know you have gone to an extent of others that have not achieved you are learned so you don't need to suffer you don't need at uh, you've gone to job and you're told to prove yourself that you have you have papers for medicine you have papers for accounts you have made papers for secretarial no but once you're going to diaspora sweetheart be ready your first years to go back to school learn their language and learn or show that you have the knowledge of medicine or whatever course you're going to do there 
I hope that is so clear. Another point is once you've gone through diaspora, it's like starting a whole new life. What do I mean by starting a whole new life? You've gone through diaspora, you know no one, that's number one. Number two, you have nowhere to sleep. Number three, you don't have even a spoon, a chair, or even a cup to say that it's your own. So you have to hustle for you to get anything new. Not anything, but you have to get a new life. You have to start afresh. Each and every day, you have to buy a spoon, a cup, a plate, a bed, a mattress, a carpet, you know, for you to start a life. It's as if you're starting a new beginning this is you a new beginning is coming up from you back at home no stress life started when you're born the minute you're born you started your life you've gone to high school you've finished your college still at home you've started everything your parents are there to always provide for you shelter accommodation food transport and everything there you're still their baby so they are still going to provide for you so you don't have to feel that life is hard so the struggles that you'll go through is now when you start looking for your own house and now your parents or your family your relatives will start chipping in to help you in diaspora you have no one to do that for you it's you to use your brain to use your mind and think about it you have to face it rough for you to start i hope guys that that's enough for today let's say but people back at home you have to understand you have to consider facts that you are going through that you think they're hard for you cost of living in your country or back at home here is so cheap you think of going to stay in korogosho and you still earn forty thousand shillings oh my god you're rich but you're still you're crying because you don't want to pay taxes. But those people in diaspora, they are paying so much. Their cost of living is high. Everything about them is high. So try and consider them, guys, when you're asking for financial support. If this person wholeheartedly feels that he or she can give it freely without having a burden, then let it be it and appreciate it. I think I don't have much to add. Whatever I said is enough for today. Let's stop at it there. And when we do the next video, we are going to expound more on it. Until next time, bye.